So, i am been putting a new fuel filter on with, uh, I cleaned out the old filter. I'm pretty sure it's a 45 or 40 micron um, filter. Yeah, pretty decent. That's all I ever ran. I had some issues running, well, my injectors were clogging up. Yeah, uh, twice or three times. So I've put this on. This is Raceworks 10 micron. Straight after the 45, I don't know if that's going to go too well or how this 10 is going to impact my fuel flow. I'm guessing by quite a lot. I should probably do this whole fuel system again, but I won't know until uh, I get this thing on the dyno and we, well, we have a look at the fuel pressure and see if it's lagging or anything like that. If so, then this whole fuel system, I'll do it again and I'll have to split into a Y and then have two of these, then back to a single 10. Or if I can find a really good uh, 10 micron high flow filter, then I can do that and I'll put the big 45 down the, down the back. I have the 10 sitting where the 45 is right now, micron filter, and then send it up to the front of the rail, and then back, and then from back of the rail, straight here. So that's what I've been doing so far. Now I've got, got this one on, for oh, it's good. I can fit that, fit my finger under there. Fuel, well, fuel lines are in, that's brand new fuel hose. All the lines are in. I can pretty much put oil on this thing right now. It's all plumbed up. It's ready to go. Um, now that I've got the fuel line done, I'm kind of working on the main power to the starter motor, main power to the fuse box. Um, I'm just playing around with it at the moment. This old one here that runs all the way down the chassis to the back of the car. It actually used to wrap up through here, wrap around and then head back down and I used to have, uh, where is it? I used to have a junction point here. That sucker used to be there for, um, well it was easy if you needed to jump start your car, you just plug onto that sucker. Perfect. So I might put that back there. It does look cleaner without it, but charging this car and jump starting this car, it made life so much simple to have that right there. Um, also after shorten this wire, is, I, oh, I don't really want to run it around the fuse box like I did before, I'd rather have it come up beside the rail here and let it hide. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll figure that one out. Uh, it's getting a little late right now, so we'll carry on with this tomorrow in the morning. And a good morning. I'm, uh, I'll come down here just to uh, plug the laptop in and just check a couple of sensors, make sure everything's all good. Um, right. I'm gonna put the battery on. Turn the ignition on. Ignition is on, but there's an issue. Okay, a little MyTech, record, plug it in, wrong way, there you go. But for some reason, unable to find a USB or CAN connection to this device. So, what have I done? What have I done? Don't know. Um, yeah, I'll have to figure that out. It might be an earth. Or something I did under, under the dash when I put the alarm system in. Not sure, but it's not recognizing it, so. Let me just have a look here. Oh, 
Yeah. ECU not connected, so I'll have to go through this and have a look what's going on if it's an earth. Because I've only changed one thing. I put the ECU earth onto the block. I did have it over here, so I might just try that. Maybe the block isn't earthed enough yet. So I'm pretty sure the only earth I've got on the block is this sucker here. Chassis to, yeah, so I'll put that other earth back on. Move that, move this earth back over to here. If that works, that just means I have to make sure this engine's earthed. Okay, 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 I've figured it out. While playing around all this crap, I accidentally, this body plug, it came off. It was just sitting there. <laughs> it doesn't clip too well. It never really has. Uh, I need to get new plugs. It pretty bugging. But got that plugged in. I was testing starter motor too because that's your trigger wire. Because it wasn't working. And but now the ignition's on. Plug this sucker in. Wrong way. Wrong way again. Then right way. Green. Connected. So now we should be able to open. Receiving ECU data, ECU file will be created. These I've just recently wiped this whole computer. Because it was playing up. Because it's a heap of crap. But there we go. It's working. Crisis diverted. Okay, now I can plug everything else back in that I was running around trying to test it. Get this thing working. Jeez, look at that mountain. Hmm. Okay, but let's have a look at sensors. I still do have a lot of sensors unplugged, but no, that's not good. Everything's battery at 12.1, Lambert error that's not plugged in. There's no map as reference. No, it's good. Uh, we'll close this. And uh, we'll click on this. Okay, there's my errors. Throttle position, not plugged in. Manifold pressure, not plugged in. Inlet air temp, not plugged in. Fuel temps, not plugged in. Um, user channel 6. Not sure what that is. Uh, error Lambo, sensor control, it's not plugged in for Lambo. Drive by wire, we, I don't have drive by wire. But that probably comes up as well with, um, since the throttle position's not in. Uh, reference sync, synchronizing nut, not synced. Always had a sync error, uh, sync issue. But everything's not plugged in, so who knows. Injector 8, open. Okay, cool as everything works, sweet as. Okay. Um, close this down. So, crisis diverted. Thank God it was just that plug. But I'll put everything else back together. Turn the ignition off. See that I was. Yeah, I was under it. Just absolutely ripping crap out to see what was going on. But anyway, now yeah, that cross is, is diverted. We um, we start with intake manifold. Oh, the fun of it. And I'll put this earth wire back over onto the engine. And I've got some earths here. Nice little earths. Put from engine to chassis. Keep everything nice and happy. Cool that. Okay. Cleaned out the regulator from superstore.com. It's quite cheap and quite nasty, but it works. And we've got the harness uh, sort of cleaned up down here. So that's its main harness all together. I've got this one here would be map sensor that mounts about here on my strut tower. It's uh, not mounted on the engine because they're very acceptable to vibration. So, get it mounted onto the chassis. 
This one is the fuel tank. This we're going on to the fuel rail at the back here. Got, uh, let's see what else we got. This will be for our body. This plugs on around about, about there. Fans there. This is air temp. That plug, that'll plug in to a sensor that's on the charge pipe before the throttle body. And then I have well, pretty much cleaned it all up. Now I've got this one. This one is uh, idle air control. I'm running a Bosch unit. Uh, it'll be mounted up in the front here. And then of course I've got the two fans which I need to mount them and tie them up. So that's sorted. Um, I guess we can put the intake on it now. Cool. Okay, so I have been. Oh no, let me turn that off. I have been playing around with the ECU and testing out a couple of the outputs. Um, where do I leave that? That's my idle, idle air control valve. That's a Bosch unit. It's. Sit here, plugs onto there, have I got that backwards, no, yeah. so that will turn on too, don't you see, get this running, uh, utilities, test outputs, reading data, and most of this isn't hooked up, but thermo fans. Not that test. AC clutch, if you can hear it. That's the AC clutch, the idle control valve. You can see it. And they're shaking. So it works. Then we got the boost control, Mac valve. It's a worker. I've got a fuel pump here, but I haven't got it hooked up. I've actually got, <laughs> I've got this wire. That's the main fuel pump for the relay. I'm not going to turn that on just yet. But so far, everything works. And this will be my expander outputs whenever I hook it up for the 60 GTs. So. That's all good for now. Turn that off. And I got all the wiring harness nice, nice and put together. Uh, I was going to put it under this tab here, but I think I'll just let it rest and see where all these top sensors got to go. But I'll do that tomorrow because I got the uh, intake manifold here. That's the big bore hypertune one. I'm going to clean it up and um, give it a good bath and probably get some new vacuum lines and stuff for it. So I'll do that tomorrow. And I uh, put, I think, a total of eight, no, not eight, four, four earth, earth cables from block to chassis. So I got this one here. I've got another one down on the back of the bell housing to the chassis and I've got this one here goes to the bottom of the sump to the chassis and then I've got this thick boy here from the side of the water pump to the chassis. You can never go wrong with too many earths. But anyway, we'll carry on with this in the morning and well, probably the afternoon. We'll get this sucker 
this big bowl of hobby chain intake all cleaned up and we'll put it on that and the throttle body and then i can run off i pretty much then run well plug up all the sensors all the lines and the intake side should be complete really and i could probably put in the charge pipe to the inner core so we'll get we'll get around to that in the morning well, what's going on guys we are uh, get the manifold out i'm gonna give it a nice little clean up and then i got myself some more vacuum hose the old stuff was getting a little crummy we're gonna get this manifold on and you see i got the stock knock sensors in but they're not plumbed up I actually don't have a harness for them. I might swap them out for a Bosch style and I'll have to make a new harness to the ECU. But that's on a later date and uh, I'll, I'll get around to it, hopefully. So I'll get this cleaned up and um, clean up the throttle body as well. Get this sucker put on. So, she's a little bit scratched up over the years. It's not that pretty. So, nah, it's not a shake car anyway, but anyway, I'm going to give this a little bit of a rub down with uh, some scotch bright and a greaser, and then I'm going to get the old polisher out, and hit it with some of this uh, purple metal polish, and see if I can make a turd shiny. Did not store that right. And even here, a little big gouge there. So it's not going to be the prettiest thing, but at least I can... Make it, give it a little shine. Well, it definitely is a lot shinier than it was. <laughs> now you can see where all the scratches are. But uh, it is what it is. And one day I'll just replace the tank and be done with it. Or um, shave the scratches down and then repolish it. But it's probably easier just to change the tank. This is as much as I, well, as clean as I can get it really. It is what it is. It does a, have a pretty good show on it still. Um, I'll work on getting this bolt mounted up onto the engine. Probably put these in a little bit of a time lapse. Um, gonna need two hands for this one. the intake on all bolted up actually looks pretty good in there look at that that's awesome now i've got to get the injector rail get the injectors they're clean i probably should clean them out again and um then i can mount up my back little vacuum tank i've got here it sits around there start hooking some lines up uh, Put the throttle body on so i'll get to uh I'll get to doing that and um by the end of today 
intake side should be done and dusted. Manifolds on, injectors, 2200cc Bosch Motorsports injectors, fuel rail, my uh, little vacuum tank here, just dis distributor, and um, I know I should have my regulator mounted to the engine, because the engine moves and the flywheel don't, and my return line is extremely tight, but I've ran that for fair few years never had too much of a problem and it's got some flex in it too but I really should mount this to the engine um, and probably have a longer line but what have I got to do now and I've got um, this is my map sensor I've mounted it to the chassis not the engine because they're very acceptable to vibrations this is only a 3.5 bar I actually need a bigger one because you know, 15 psi is natural atmosphere pressure that leaves me with like 1.5 bar which 38 pound of boost is already maxing that out so I might have to go up to a 5 bar um, for now I've got a complete uh, total mess got the Bosch uh, idle air control valve that'll go to this pipe here that comes off the center underneath and pretty much I've got to mount the sucker there somewhere and this one goes to the intake charge pipe I'll do, I'll do that get that mounted up and on and then I can put the throttle body on and I'll probably call that call it for the day that'll be it but look at it, it's getting there, getting real close. Now once all this intake side's done, then we're pretty much just waiting on the turbo to get back from Melbourne. Okay, putting that idle air control valve on was an absolute pain in the butt, trying to get it in the right position. Yeah, because it's got to match up to here and this pipe. Plus I got all the power steering line here. Pain in the butt. But yeah. Intake's on. Throttle body is on. Charge pipe's on. 
auto air control is plumbed up. I'm gonna have to pull this off again though. I need to clean this throttle body out and I need to clean up this charge pot, which is a bit faded. And also this uh, go house racing. Um, what is it? Radiator overflow tank. Little tight. Yeah, a little tight down there. So I'm going to have to modify it. Probably uh, cut a bit of the sand tank out or something like that. Just to get it to fit a bit better. But I don't need a tank that size anyway. But yeah, I can modify that. Get it to work properly. But that'll do it for now. I'm going to end this and um, pack all this up before it starts getting too brisk, too cold, and um, yeah, then I will see you in the next one. Catch you leaders, subscribe, like it, please like it does help, and um, yeah, see you in the next one guys.